1.10 is about three different types of discontinuities in graphs. One type of discontinuity is a point discontinuity, and this is what we typically know as a whole in a rational function. Everywhere else on the domain, the function is defined, but right there, there's just a hole. It doesn't exist at that one point. It exists when it's really, really close to the hole, but it just doesn't exist at this point. In this case, the point is negative 2, 4. This is what the function looks like, y equals negative x squared minus 4 over x plus 2. And this is what we call a removable discontinuity because we, we would be able to just plug in one point and cover up the hole. So if you're able to do that, like if it's if it is just a point discontinuity, that means that it is called a removable discontinuity. And you'll see more about why it's called a removable discontinuity when we do some analysis later. A jump discontinuity is when you have a piecewise function and the pieces of the function are not lining up. So we have this big gap between negative x minus 8 and the other part, the other piece of the function. This is what the function looks like, and this is considered a non-removable discontinuity because there's not anything that you can do that will make these functions go together. They are what they are, it's non-removable. Infinite discontinuities are when we have a function approaching infinity or negative infinity. They typically happen with rational functions. In this case, we have y equals 1 over x plus 4. That means we have a vertical asymptote as negative 4, and that's why we're seeing the infinite discontinuity here. This is non-removable because there's nothing we can do to the function to make this kind of go away. We can't remove it. So now I left space down below here because I wanted to work out, like if you were just given these, these different functions without the graphs and you were asked to identify the discontinuities in them, how would you do it? That's what I want to work out down here. For this one, my instinct when I see a rational function is to factor. I always factor first. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. And once I factor this one, I'm seeing that there is a common factor in the bottom and the top, and that common factor is x plus 2. So I'm going to remove the common factor, but I know that when I cross off a common factor on the top and bottom, that means that there's a hole at x equals negative 2 because the, the factor I crossed off was x plus 2. So we have a hole at x equals negative 2. The more college board way to say this would be we have a point discontinuity at x equals negative 2. Next, for the jump discontinuity, which is non-removable, what I'm going to do here is to analyze what each of these functions is at x equals negative 1. So I'm going to plug in the first one. So instead of negative x minus 8, I'll write negative, negative 1 minus 8. So I'm plugging in negative 1 to this function, and I will get 1 minus 8, which is negative 7. That makes sense. When I see my graph up here, the left side is approaching negative 7. And then on the right side, I'm going to plug in negative 1 again. And I get negative 1. This also makes sense up at the graph here. We have, we have that point at negative 1, at y equals negative 1. So because we're getting very, two very different y values, that means that we have a jump discontinuity at x equals negative 1 jump discontinuity at x equals negative 1, and that's a non-removable discontinuity because jump discontinuities are non-removable. Now for the infinite discontinuity, which is also non-removable, I'm going to look at this function, y equals 1 over x plus 4. Normally when I see a rational function, I'm going to factor, but this one is already factored. There's nothing we can do to further factor it. So all that I'm going to do is figure out where is my vertical asymptote. I have a vertical asymptote at x plus 4 equals 0, or at x equals negative 4. That makes sense. When I look at my graph up here, there is a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 4. From the left side, it's approaching negative infinity. From the right side, it's approaching positive infinity. That is a non-removable discontinuity, which is happening at x equals negative 4. Based on the following graph of f of x, identify the x value of each discontinuity, state what type of discontinuity it is, and state whether it is removable. I'm going to go from left to right on this graph. The first discontinuity I'm seeing is at x equals negative 2. So I have a discontinuity at x equals negative 2. This is a jump discontinuity. This is when two parts of the piecewise function came together, but they were not coming together at the same y value. One's at 2, one's like down here at maybe 1 third. So I have a jump discontinuity 
at x equals negative 2. Jump discontinuities are non-removable. My next type of discontinuity that I see is at x equals 0. I see from the left side it's approaching infinity, from the right side it's approaching negative infinity. This means that I have probably some type of rational function because I have an asymptote at x equals 0, and it is a infinite discontinuity. Infinite discontinuities are non-removable discontinuities. The next discontinuity is at x equals 2, and that is a point discontinuity. Or we sometimes call them a whole in a rational function. Um, so we have a point discontinuity at x equals 2. Point discontinuities are removable because we can plug the hole. If we have a hole at x equals 2, we can fill in that point with one single coordinate point at x equals 2 and there's no longer a hole. The function would now be continuous if we find a point to fill that hole. So it's a removable discontinuity. And for our last discontinuity that is occurring at x equals 4, it's another jump discontinuity. And jump discontinuities are non-removable. Here we're asked to identify the discontinuities of function f state what type of discontinuity it is and whether it is removable. When I see a rational function, my instinct is always to factor. So I'm going to factor this one. And now that I've factored it, I see that there is a common factor in the top and the bottom, and that common factor is x minus 5. So I'm going to cancel that out, but whenever I cancel out a factor from the top and bottom, that tells me that there is a hole, also known as a point discontinuity, at that specific value. So x minus 5 equals 0, at x equals 5, we have a point discontinuity. Point discontinuities are removable. So that is one of our discontinuities. But we actually have another one here. If we're looking at this function again, we still have an x plus 6 in the denominator. And if we were to make this a negative 6, if we were to make x a negative 6, we have negative 6 plus 6, that would produce a 0. And when we have a zero in the denominator, that's undefined. It means we have a vertical asymptote there. So at x plus 6 equals 0, or x equals negative 6, we have a vertical asymptote. And that is known as an infinite discontinuity. Infinite discontinuities are non-removable. And that's our second and last discontinuity for this function.